Time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. All right, we are continuing our 49ers roster countdown with a fun rookie. One that, uh, you know, assistant GM Adam Peters says was probably our biggest value when drafting. And that is none other than six-round cornerback Tariq Castro-Fields out of Penn State. Um, Really, really like this guy. And, you know, it's funny. I, I know I say that a lot. When you dive into what these players had to go through to get to where they are, it's hard not to like them. It really, really is. And and this, I've got some issues. I had some issues before he was drafted. I'll share, you know, my pre-draft write-up with him. Obviously, once he was drafted by the 49ers, did a deeper dive. There's lots of issues on why he fell to where he did. There's lots of issues on why he can be successful in the NFL, like some positive things, right? So let, let, let's get to know him. Tariq Castro Fields, number 61 on our player countdown. And again, this is all about biggest impact on this year's season, 2022 for the 49ers. Six foot one, 197 pounds. It's like the the 49ers have a type when it comes to corner. And it, it doesn't go off by more than an inch and a half. It doesn't go off by more than 10 pounds. If you look at every single outside corner, they all fit this exact same mold. 5'11 to like right at 6'1", 190 to like right at 204. Like they all fit in there. He's 23 years old. He's wearing jersey number 36, which is an interesting look for a cornerback but we'll see here now he's from the dc area played at riverdale baptist high school um just outside of dc uh they're the crusaders which i always thought was like the dumbest mascot ever the crusaders lost like every battle and it represents like the worst time ever for christianity but anyway uh, that's nothing anyway anyway i'd I, I stop but being a history guy has has some issues. He was a sociology major and a four-star recruit out of high school. Now, he was first team all state in Washington D.C. He was an all metro pick. Um, he had offers from Maryland, chose to go and Alabama, and chose Penn State. Uh, go work with Tony Franklin up there. Um, and you know he was honorable mention in the conference at Big Ten, 2019, 2020. And he's a student, man. You know, he looked up to Richard Sherman even back when he was in college. Talked about how he studied Richard Sherman's game, all of those things, and just he's a mental positive positively mental guy um and was projected fourth fifth round which is kind of where i had him as well but he kind of fell you know adam peters was on record saying all the way back from 2019 they had their eye on him and kind of watched his career as somebody that they really really liked and he is also a former college teammate with none other than kevin givens so gets to kind of reunite with you know another penn state guy there um so let, let's go through his athletic profile. Let's talk about this, okay? Probably the best thing that he has metric-wise, he ran a 4.3840, which is top-notch, 85th percentile of all NFL quarterbacks. So a straight light speed, check. Um, uh, three cones, 7.05, nah, not great. So not the biggest change of direction guy, so not going to be a slot guy. Vertical 37, that's perfectly fine. Was drafted in the sixth round, very last pick, I believe, 221 by the 49ers. Now, let's go to my pre-draft write-up. Okay, so again, this has not been altered since, you know, I finished my film evaluation on him. Five years playing time, senior bowl standout, sticky tight, right? Whenever I was doing my first film evaluations on Tariq Castro Fields, tight. I mean, just Velcro, which that, the 49ers put a premium on that. They really, really do. You look at Charvarius Ward. You look at Emmanuel Mosley. You look at Ambry Thomas. They want guys that are always close to the wide receiver. They don't really value ball skills. Interceptions, not his game. Pass breakups, not his game. That's not what he does. He's speed. He has the perfect size that they want, and he's Velcro, sticky tight. Um, I put at his best in the red zone. I thought that's where he excelled. You give him a tight crunch area, and his game just goes through the roof. Athletic, good feet, long, uh, arm length, all right. Looks better in press than off zone, which is going to be a transition for him. Um, ball skills almost non-existent. And that's a problem. Um, top end speed shows. Top end speed shows, but still tight hipped. Missed tackles. This is why he fell. A lot of teams will take him off of their board because he had a 29.1 missed tackle percentage. That ranked 227th out of all defensive backs in college last year. It's as bad as it gets. And so... 
the 49ers are betting they can correct that because, and again, you can go to Akella Witherspoon, never tackled, right? Um, you look at Leon O'Neal, not a good tackler. You look at the, the 49ers feel they can fix this with Tariq Castro Fields, and that's going to be the thing. If he can fix his tackling issues, he's going to get on the field eventually. If he can't fix that, that's going to be a problem. Now, you don't tackle in practice, so it, the only way you can find that out is preseason games, inter-squad square scrimmages, things like that. Um, you know, And again, back to Adam Peters came out and said, man, we, we had a fourth-round grade on him and thought that's where he would go. We, really good value to get him in the sixth round. Now, you look at some of his pro football focus numbers, finished 2021 with a 67.8 grade. All right, over 708 snaps, 385 snaps in coverage. Um, Lots of experience. Lots of experience. Only allowed 56% completion percentage. Again, what is it Tariq Castro Fields does well? Makes it very difficult to complete passes. Not because of interceptions. Not because of batted passes. Just super tight windows for the quarterbacks to fit the ball in. That's his best. 56% completion percentage. That's great. Gave up one touchdown. Uh, had no interceptions. But again, you go back to 16 missed tackles. That's the one that kind of scares me. Now, if you look across his game, um, again, it's all based on pro football focus. 71.7 coverage grade, that's good. 54.6 run defense, awful. 35% or 35.4 tackling, awful. 61.3 man, good. 72.8 zone, good. Um, and now... You look at his alignment where he played out wide. He took 50, 562 snaps in the box 90 on the line of scrimmage, uh, kind of blitzing off the nickel position, 43, slot nickel 10, deep as a safety three. So he's an outside corner. That's not going to change. Traits, change the direction, three. That's bad for a corner. Frame seven, physicality eight, awareness three, and then speed eight. Um, he has an NFL body. There is no doubt about it. Now, my athletic and player comp, they're the same. Eli Apple, <laughs> um, which is not like the best thing, but he's a starting NFL corner. Looks like him, plays like him, um, doesn't give up a lot of separation. But again, you're not going to get those game-changing interceptions and things. It's just not going to happen. Now, you look at his experience. He played in 52 games in the Big Ten, which is impressive against some of the best competition. L look at the wide receivers he practiced against every single day, you know, at just for Penn State. They continue to put out a lot of guys. Um, so he, he's got that experience, 30 career starts, um, and only three career interceptions in 52 games. That's kind of that's the issue. So what do I think is going to happen? Best case scenario, he balls out in camp and lands on that fifth or sixth quarterback spot, plays a lot of special teams, and makes the active roster. Most likely, I do think that he'll make the roster, but could be like one of those red shirt whatever guys. Think Diamador Lenore, right? Diamador Lenore last year, where you might see him in a game or two and then just not see him for like 14 straight games. Uh, maybe like that's kind of the career trajectory that he's going to be on. Uh, is there a chance he doesn't make the 53-man roster? It's small. I, I'd probably say 75%. Whenever you get drafted, even though it's in the sixth round, odds are you're going to make the roster. Is there an undrafted free agent that could come up and take his spot? Yeah, it's possible. Um, even if that happens, I think the 49ers would keep him on a practice squad. That's worst case. Um, actually, worst case is he doesn't make the 53. Another team steals him and goes to their team. That'd probably be worst case. But the issue with him is right now, there's just too much, too many guys in front of him. Uh, Mosley, Charvarius Ward, Diamador Lenore, Thomas, Verrett, those guys clearly ahead of him. That's five dudes that I don't think he's going to be able to pass anytime soon. And that's not even throwing in slot corners, which I don't think he'll be there either. So um, I like this guy, but this is a red shirt. This is, you know, we're working on a T-shirt right now. It should be out soon. I'll let you guys know. Uh, it's it, it's a solid red shirt. And on the front, it says, uh, I got drafted by the 49ers, and all I got was this red shirt. <laughs> and on the back, it has our, our logo on it. I, uh, but anyway, like, I want to send one to him because I think that's what this year is going to look like. So I like Tariq Castro Fields. The athleticism's there. The speed's there. The NFL body's there. Love the Velcro, like sticky tight coverage. Doesn't get called for pass interference either. He's not grabby. He's just a mirror match kind of guy. 
Just no ball skills and poor tackling. He can fix those things. He's got enough elite traits to where he belongs in this league. Uh, I want to say thank you to Josh and Anthony, executive producers of this series, and we're just going to keep counting them down, baby.